Right, the first of the colour images is called Wellspring. Um, and you've got Wellspring, the name of the boat. That helps, doesn't it? Especially when I'm judging the print. Right. So you, you have um, the boat, the old um, wreck or ruin of a boat, taken from a fairly low angle, creating this nice shape, the triangular shape here. Lovely colours and the, the sides of the boat still remaining. Um, you've got some nice uh, reeds on the left hand side, you've got a river on the right, um, and nice trees in the distance. The, the, the print is let down, you, you can just see it and no more, and the, the sky has been processed to try and, presumably to try and bring in detail, but unfortunately it's just, uh, uh, it's been over-processed and you can just see lines here of different colours, so that it just looks quite uh, marked in the print and let down for that reason, so Wellspring gets 15 points. And this is called Bride's Head Revisited. So you have the, the, the old house um, looking at the print rather than the image, the projected image, which is a little brighter. I just felt that the, the, it was just, the light was a little bit flat. Um, it would have been helped perhaps by better light. And uh, the house has got a lot of detail. It's all sharp, uh, interesting. Uh, detail all around the, the, the roof and around the dome. You've got the lead-in from the hedges on the left. And of course, you've got this figure kicking around the edge of the hedge. Now, it would have been so easy to remove that when processing. Now, I assume the author wanted to uh, retain the figure. And, you know, I, I asking myself, does it help to have the figure? And I think it does. I think without the figure, I think, uh, it, again, it's just a little lacking, just having the house and the hedges on, on their own. So uh, I think perhaps adding the figure was a good thing. And Bride's Head Revisited scored 16 points. <coughs> Eagle Owl. Um, again, a bit overexposed in the projected image. But the print is, is a good range of tones, nicely exposed, um, rather a, a, a mottled background, so slightly distracting background. Um, I, I feel the biggest problem with the print is that the only thing that's sharp is the face and the eyes. Now, obviously, that's what you have to have sharp, the eyes and the face, but it is such a small part of the print. There's a little bit of the tail that's sharp also, but the, even the, the claws and the legs are just lacking in sharpness a bit and the wings are not sharp. So I just feel it needs a bit more sharp in the image. So it falls down because of that um, and Eagle Owl gets 15 points. And this is called Flying Squirrel. Uh, terrific image. Um, you get the squirrel jumping towards you and uh, the photographer has just caught, uh, caught the squirrel mid-flight. Everything is sharp around the head, the ears, the forepaws. Um, it, lacking sharpness in the tail and also in the hind limbs a little. But there's enough there to retain the interest. Um, the lovely diffuse background um, compared to the mottled background of the previous print uh, and lovely colour. You're not seeing colours there. There's a sort of heathery colour around here. Purple, heathery purple. Um, so a lovely print. Um, it is becoming, a, you're beginning to see more and more of these flying squirrels and you know, if you, if you just go along and get your shot um, so that, that, that's the only slight concern I have. But despite that, I felt that uh, it's, it's such a good image, a good print, it should still get 20 points.
uh, this is called a cluster of one. And um, the, the detail, you really have to be up close in the print to see the detail, incredible detail around the head. And the, the, the whole fly is, is sharp. Um, and I assume it's been taken with focus stacking. Uh, I'm not sure what it's sitting on. Some, something, some bit of food or something has attracted it. Um, the, uh, the, the projected image looks very good round the edge here, but in the print, you have to see the print to appreciate, there's a slight problem round the edge. Um, the, the, there's a darker pink around behind the hairs, round the, the back side there, and a little over the top. Whereas in, you lose it in the projected image. Um, I don't know whether this is a problem with focus stacking. I, I don't tend to do focus stacking. Um, so perhaps it's just one of the difficulties about focus stacking, I don't know. But that just let it down a little. The other thing is, this is the, the head and the four structures there are the main subject in the image. And I just felt it was just a little near the, the our left hand side here. I just sort of liked a little more space there to bring the head into the thirds um, or towards the thirds at least. So, but nevertheless, good image, 17 points. This is called Storm Brewing, and um, this. Uh, I guess it's taken some way up in Scotland. Um, the print comes across darker than the projected image, as all these have been. Um, the, uh, you have your couple standing on the beach, lovely colours in the water, turquoisey water beyond. And the, it looks as though the author has produced a vignette, a darkening vignette, um, to help bring your eye in towards the, uh, the couple on the beach. And I think it's perhaps slightly overdone, but I think it helps to some extent. The sky, I think, has been a little overworked, but just, just enough. Um, I think the author perhaps just gets away with that. Um, but I think there's been some work done to bring out detail in the sky. But I like the image. I like the print. Um, and uh, Storm Brewing at 17 points. And this is called Colony. Um, again, I think the print is far better than the projected image because the, the detail that we're seeing in this gamut is just fantastic in the print. Lovely, lovely detail right along the wings and the body. Everything's completely sharp. And I think the author, I, I, I suppose I'd have preferred the, the, the gamut, the big gamut to be at an angle. But it's right across the middle of the, uh, the, uh, the print. Um, I think the author has perhaps felt that the sky has been a bit bland. And I think the multiple gannets that you see, the colony of gannet, gannets, um, I think has been put in and processing. Um, the reason um, certainly one of them has been put in, because you can't see it when you look at detail on the print itself. Because one of the small gannets overlies the big gannet. So, you know, if you're going to do that sort of thing, be very careful that you, you, uh, you don't do, you don't have one overlying the big gannet. There's another tiny dot there, which could be another one there. And there's one just squeezed in between the wings, so that, that's all right. <laughs> but um, fantastic detail on the bird, and you really have to come and look at the print closely. And a colony gets 17 points, despite the, uh, the problems of processing. Uh, this is called Barn Owl in Flight. Um, lovely image, um, again brighter in the projected image than on the print. Um, the, the, the barn owl's wings in a beautiful position, nicely positioned in the frame. There's <coughs> some detail in the background. You just get the impression of trees uh, down the right-hand side and along the foreground. 
There's also just in the print, there's a couple of lines which are, are hard to see. You can, I'm not sure whether that's out there, but there's, there's a couple of lines appearing. So maybe there's a fence been there. And it's the sort of thing, if it's not a nature shot, it would be worth just taking out. Um, the light has maybe been a little flat, but I think the author has done pretty well in getting all the detail in the bird, losing a little bit of detail just in that forehead of the owl. It's a, it's a difficult spot to catch. So barn owl in flight is 18 points. And this is, this is Dalmore Beach, um, Dal Dalmore Beach on the west side of, of the Isle of Lewis. Um, and uh, it's a pleasant shot of the beach. You've got foreground of rocks. You've got this lovely wave um, detail and uh, a sort of pinnacle of rock here and some more ro a rock face uh, behind it. Um, in a way, I felt it was unfortunate that the tide didn't come in a bit further. I think it would have liked to see the water splashing around these rocks. I think that, that would have helped. But as it's presented, I think the main point of interest are the waves splashing around here. Perhaps cropping down there might have produced a better image or a more interesting Im image. It's a bit dark, um, not so much in the projected image, but in the print. The, the rock face here is just a, a little darker than I'd like it to be. I'd just like to see a bit more detail on the print. Um, so a nice print, but it just needs something to lift it, and it gets 15 points. Preparing to land. Another image of a gannet. Um, and, uh, in this case, um, the, uh, the projected image, I think, comes out better than the print, except for a bit of burnout uh, over the back, and, and so it looks worse there, but there is still a bit of burnout uh, in the back of the neck and the body, and just some of the wings. The problem with the print is that the dark, the dark sea in the background is very dark, and we're just not getting separation of the tip of the wing from the sea. Um, whereas in the projected image, you do get separation. So, uh, you know, again, that's something the author could go back and work in the print um, and just try and bring back the detail, if, if that's possible, uh, around this area. But uh, potentially a good image just, just let down a little bit, particularly in the print. Um, and preparing to land at 16 points. And this is rainbow over the buckle. Um, lovely, lovely landscape. And the author has done remarkably well to, to have, to have the, the rainbow just positioned nicely over buckle, uh, et of moor, and uh, the river in the foreground. Um, a fairly slow shutter speed has been selected, uh, and we're losing just a bit of detail, it's, uh, the, the water flowing over the rocks is just a bit milky, no detail at all uh, in, in these areas. I'd just have liked to see just a, a slightly faster shutter speed bring out a little more detail in the water. And I did wonder in the print about just taking a, an inch or so off the top, I just feel this part of the sky is just a bit too much and just bringing it down to the top, almost to the top of the rainbow just helps to, to enclose things a, a, a bit better. So I think that, that might have helped. But um, a, a nice print um, and the rainbow beautifully caught gets 17 points. And this, this is called Wait For Me. And you get your Scotty dog hammering towards the, uh, the photographer. Um, and uh, off the ground, everything seems to be off the ground. Great motion shot. Um, looking at detail in the print, uh, the, it's not, the whole thing is not quite as sharp as I'd like to see it. Um, 
and uh, the eyes are just lacking, just a little bit dark. It would be nice to see just a bit of detail or a bit of, of uh, catch light in the eyes. But um, difficult, difficult to get everything sharp when, when the dog's coming at this speed towards you. But um, uh, that just lets the print down a little. So um, wait for me to get 16 points. Female, <coughs> female sparrowhawk. Um, image of a sparrowhawk and, and presumably in a hide setup coming down to, to sit on the mossy uh, log or, or, or perch, looking straight at the author. Um, you've got a bit of fern coming in on the left side there, and in, in a way that just uh, it distracts a little. Um, the uh, the print is let down a little because right throughout the background and throughout the bird itself that there's just a bit of uh, noise and um, I think that's perhaps the author has tried to try to sharpen the bird um, more than the background because the, the noise is a little irregular you have to look close, closely at the print to see that um, so Sparrowhawk a female sparrowhawk is 15 points. Diving for the corner. Uh, a great action shot. Um, great range of tones in the print. A bit, a bit bright in the projected image. But you've got the player just going for the line. And the author's done very well just to, to have this selected group of players I mean, one problem with rugby images is to, to get rid of all the other players and just focus down on the, uh, the relevant individuals, and it's done well here. Um, I'm not quite sure. There seems to be another figure. You've got this chap, this chap, this chap, and this chap here, but there seems to be someone else lying in some way behind. Um, and in a way, that's a pity because that, that's up taking you out the image there. It would be nice just to get rid of that. Um, and uh, the, the other point to comment on is that it would have been uh, better just to darken this house or even just clone it out with some more trees and clone out these yellow patches and perhaps that bright patch there because everything just tends to take your eye up to that top, top left corner but a really good print diving for the corner gets 18 points Street music, um, you've got the group of street players, um, the one looking towards the photographer, the other is looking away. Um, unfortunately, the only thing that's really sharp in the image is this drum in this corner, so that the, 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 the focus, depth of focus has been focused on the drum and is not deep enough to, to have uh, the other players sharp. So uh, the print falls down for that reason. So street music gets 14 points. And this image is called Approaching Storm. I just love this image. Um, you have the, the, the storm, the background, rain coming in um, into the valley here. You've got light coming in picking off the cottage, an interesting pot cottage uh, set on the right hand side with some outhouses with nice red roofs, corrugated iron roofs on the left. Um, nice composition and uh, lovely light which is still lighting up. I think the author has probably vignetted um, the, the edge, darkened down the edge, but that, that's great. That's just helped to bring your eye into to the, the main part of the house and these other houses. So, lovely image. Um, no doubt at all in my mind that this gets 20 points. And this is called um, Fine Dining Glasgow Style. And 
an interesting image. Um, I think the author is to be commended for just trying actually getting his camera out and shooting this Blue Lagoon fish and chip shop. Um, and uh, there's a lot of things going on round about. I mean, with any, this type of street photography is always difficult to try and uh, have your subject just uh, restricted to the point of interest. And there's a lot happening here. There's girls sitting in the, in the ground eating their fish and chips. Other characters here, and something on in the left. Um, perhaps rather unusually, the, the, the print, you see as much in the print, if not more in the print, as you do. This image looks a bit darker in the projected image. Um, first, I thought it was too distracting, and I was scoring it a bit low, but the more I looked at it, the more I began to like the image. Um, and in the end, um, it got 16 points. Miss Pollard. Now, I don't know whether Miss Pollard is the horse or the rider, um, but uh, the author has done well to, to just have the horse and rider going over the jump and nothing else, no other distractions. So that's great. And um, where the print falls down a little is that it's uh, very contrasty and you've got some highlights, very prominent highlights over the, the horse's forequarter and also down, just a bit burnt out down in the jodhpur here. Um, so that I think you need to go back and try and control that a bit better. Um, th this dandelion also seems to catch my eye a bit, that's a fairly small point. But overall, Miss Pollard got 15 points for the print. Windows, you have your architectural shot looking up. Um, you get building on the left and reflection on the right um, of this part of the building, and then this part of the building is picking up the reflections from the other side. So you've got uh, intersecting reflections. Um, the, this image of the print, I, I found my eye was just tending to wander around. It didn't have anywhere to settle, and uh, you know I think I think you want to try and always have your viewer bringing uh, focusing down on the, the main point of the subject. Whereas I, I was taken out both sides here, and a bright part right up at the top of the image. That's the bright part of the sky. So um, the windows get 14 points. Take that um, image of presumably bear cubs, one thumping the other, or presumably playing. A uh, very good image, very good to be in a situation where you can take a shot like that uh, so close. It's no doubt a long lens, but I don't know how far away the author actually is. But great to catch an image like that. It's all sharp. Um, perhaps the, the background is perhaps a little distracting. It would have been nicer if, if that was more out of focus, but uh, it's, not, it's not bad. And um, take that at 19 points. This is called Have a Heart. So you've got some uh, rhododendron leaves um, lying on top of a tree stump. Uh, and some greenery down the right hand side. And the rhododendron leaves are shaped like a heart. Presumably that's where, why the author has given it this title. And uh, you know, are, are these leaves, uh, uh, have they been arranged like that? Or did the author find them like that? I don't know. Um, but I, I think it just, it just lacks impact for, for a, a competition. You're comparing it against some of these other images. It just, doesn't have the impact of these other prints. So take, um, have a heart, got 14 points. This is called Common Blue. This is a beautiful image of uh, the common blue butterfly, beautifully sharp all around these, the, the detail, all the details there. I think that the, the the image is a little overexposed compared to the prints, just right. Um, except perhaps for 
a tiny, a tiny street down in the front um, of the wing there. It's quite prominent in the print, and I wonder if there's any detail there that could be brought back. Um, I was really swithering. This almost got 20 points, but not quite in the end. And the reason it didn't get 20 in the end was because this part of the, uh, the stem that it's sitting on is sharp. Um, this is out of focus, nicely out of focus, but this part kept catching my eye. And it's just a bit unfortunate because you can't, you know, you can't do anything about that. Um, so that's why I only scored 19 points rather than 20 points. And this is called crested tit, as, as you see. Um, you, you have crested tit sitting on a, a perch, nice perch, beautifully sharp round the head, losing it a little in the, in the tail and just under the, um, the belly here, but um, sharp in all the, the important areas. Um, lovely diffuse background, um, crested tit, 18 points. And our last colour print is a kingfisher. Um, and these are lovely birds. The kingfisher just looks as though he's playing with his minnow before he, he swallows it. Um, he's sitting on an in interesting perch. All the details there in the bird, beautifully sharp. A lovely diffuse background. Um, we're seeing a lot of kingfishers now, and uh, you know, I, again, I suppose you could say it's just a, bur a bird on a stick, but beautiful image, and kingfisher get 18 points. And that's